You need your hair super curly. No, no. All right, we're going live here. <laughs> My hair's like, it's been a long day. All right, got it. I got it. I got orientation. All right, hold on. I got it. All right, we're going this way, apparently. Why is this working? Hi. How are you? Um, I don't know why I'm sideways, but I'm going to be sideways for this uh, particular part of the broadcast. Congratulations. Why does it happen? It happens every time. And no matter how what I do, it always is screwed up. Uh, welcome to the post-debate coverage. I'm uh, home. It's been a long day, as you may have seen. But I'm feeling good. I'm ready to go and talk about the debates. Any comments you may have, drop them in here, and I'll try to go as many as I can. Um, lots of uh, great comments already. But I will say that was... Look, I def a lot of people bashed the first debate. And I can understand it. Look, it didn't have the main guy there, the guy in first place. That's understandable. But to be honest with you, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was a decent debate. I thought there was some good... Um, uh, content that actually came out of it. I thought some policies were actually discussed, which is like totally rare in the Republican Party these days. That though was a disaster. That was, uh, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. All they did was talk over each other the entire time. All of them made the same freaking decision that they needed to be more aggressive and yell about everything. And this is what you get when you go down that road. Um, I thought it was terrible. Um, uh, you know, that's not to say there weren't some good moments in there. There was some, some good points as well, but generally speaking, I thought it was a, a really a, a catastrophic failure. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was really bad. Um, the, the moderators had no control over the event whatsoever. Um, everyone was talking, half of them were off mic while they were talking. Tim Scott thought the, what he was going to do was just talk the entire time and see if that worked. It didn't. Um, Mike Pence, he was, when he would speak, it's like one word every six minutes. I, I, I'm the Pence thing. I don't even understand. Um, you know, uh, for some reason, there is this internal dialogue going on with these candidates where they believe the path to the presidency is to yell at Vivek Ramaswamy, which again, like, I just don't understand it. The guy's at like 6%. If you're going to yell at someone, I pick someone who's, you know, ahead of you and, and, and go after them. Um, but instead of doing that, they are sitting back and just yelling at Vivek. And I guess, like, the theory here is they think he's, like... They're uh, threatened. The, yeah, I think that's part of it. My wife's sitting here next to me. I, is, is they're threatened. I think that's part of it. I think it's also that uh, um, they see him as the... You know, coming out of that last debate, he was sort of the guy that everyone was hammering for being too eager and too young, and they all kind of think that they can kind of knock him around from this position of authority. Um, I, I don't get it. I mean, I, you know, they just seem to have, it's like one of those things where you have the line planned or reaction planned. They just had this approach planned and just waited for Vivek to say something and go after him. And again, like, I, you know, Vivek is, we've had him on the show a million times. He's, you know, he's, I think he's generally a good guy. I don't know him all that well, but He's not going to be uh, president of the United States, I don't think, uh, not at 38 years old um, or whatever he is. But to act as if he's the big problem in the country, I mean, they were mad, more angry at Vivek than they were at Biden. And I don't understand that. Uh, Haley, I, look, I don't know. I will tell you this. and I'll, You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, last time Haley's debate, I did not think went well. I didn't think she did a good job. Her answer on abortion to me was, was absolute, like, is as if she put her finger up in the air, uh, licked her finger, put it up in the air, and just waited for a pole to hit it. It was like, I thought it was terrible. It's, it showed no leadership at all. And then she seemed to actually do okay in the, uh, you know, rise a little bit in the after debate polling over the past month or so. So maybe this approach will work for her. I'm, I'm allowing for the, maybe, I, I just don't get it. But this approach, which was different than the last one, this sort of just yell at everybody and be insulting for no reason, I thought was terrible. Like, and I look, I know that that's obviously Donald, Donald Trump's shtick. Nikki Haley cannot pull that off. Um, and honestly, I don't love it out of Donald Trump either, but there's no way Nikki Haley can pull it off in my book. I, I thought she was honestly like really grating tonight. Um, and I, I'm not, a, I know there's a lot of Haley haters out there. I, I got it. Um, I'm not necessarily one of them. I mean, I don't agree with her on some of this stuff, but I don't I don't dislike Nikki Haley generally. But 
I thought that was a terrible performance of her. This is a side that we've never seen of her. Yeah, yeah, it really was awful, I thought. Um, by the way, before I keep blabbing on, thank you so much for showing up for the post-debate coverage um, as we do some uh, commentary on what just happened. And I'm definitely going to do this YouTube stream because I had to watch that stupid thing. So I'm gonna, we're going to get some fun out of this. If you wouldn't mind while you're here, click like. Uh, you know, uh, and also subscribe to the channel. Um, we do appreciate it when you do so. Click the bell for notifications. Do all the things. Uh, we do. Uh, we do like it. I thought so. Let's go through them here. Uh, Desantis, I thought was good. I thought he was solid in the debate. I, you know, look, I don't think Desantis has had a lot of bad moments, um, and uh, I, I don't know that he's done anything to separate himself. From the rest of this pack, I think he's just been good. He hasn't had bad moments. I think he's been solid. And look, that should be something that puts you in the conversation. I don't think, you know, I, I don't know that he's had like spectacular moments, but I think he's been good in, in both of these debates. Um, we got a, a super chat coming in here. Let's see, I'll read it for you. Vivek is the only threat to the establishment besides Trump. The rest of them are war hawks and out of touch. Tim tried to make an aggressive approach and it was bad. Trump 2024. All right. Thank you, Hayden. Appreciate the uh, super chat. and uh, Send your super chats. I'll try to get to all of those if I can. Um, but uh, I will say um, uh, on, on that point, um, Tim Scott in particular, I would agree as well. He came up with this idea that he was just going to start start talking and be more aggressive. And that was the criticism, criticism of him last time. And I get it. You're going to sit here and just try to solve the problem that you had in your previous debate. But the question for, is that enough? I, like, I, look, I, I don't, again, I'm not a Scott hater either. Like, I, I don't dislike intensely any of these people. But I will say with, with the Tim Scott thing, uh, I, I think I've seen enough of the Tim Scott thing. You know, like, I, I, I like the, you know, I've liked the guy. I've liked him when he's been on the air, but like this, he just does not seem like he's ready for this or able to do it very well. Um, so uh, him, uh, you know, Pence, the same thing. Like I, you know, look, I just don't see it. I don't see there's any possibility. I think it's time for both of them to, to, uh, to figure out something else to do with the rest of their year. Um, so anyway, that's uh, my take on that. Vivek again, and I've said this before. I know a lot of people. Vivek is really polarizing to the audience. Um, and about half the people like him and about half the people hate his guts. And it's very, I mean, like the, I will say that part of it is actually a little bit strange to me because while, uh, I, of course you have your right to your opinion. Like I think in a, in a rational world and there's no rational world in primaries in a rational world, like Vivek is a young candidate. I think we could probably all assume he's not going to be president in his thirties. Um, but he does have a lot to add to the conversation. And I thought he was—he's good in this format. He's—he's—he's he's, he's clean with his language. He, yes, people don't see him as authentic, maybe. But look, he—he he can, passionate. yeah, he can, he can, uh, he is passionate, and I think he does. He is a smart guy. Like the, the Nikki Haley insult. Oh, I, we get dumber every time you talk. Oh. It's just cheese, right? Like it, the guy, the the guy is not a dummy. He's not a dummy. Now he is at some level doing an impersonation of a candidate sometimes, it feels like. And I, and I get that. I, that's a fair criticism of him, but he's not stupid. He's not He's not a dumb guy. He's a really smart guy. And, uh, you know, he has something to add to the conversation. Why we have to throw him to the trash? Because, uh, because we, we like a different candidate? I just don't understand it. Now, uh, Ber and like, here's a good... good um, uh, I just I just don't trust Vivek. I really liked him after his first interview with Glenn, also Shapiro. Since then, I've seen too many flip flops, and I think that's like a fair criticism of him. Um, but uh, you know, honestly, like that doesn't mean we have to hate these guys. Like, I just feel like we just totally jump to these sort of over the top conclusions and and hate every candidate. Like, look, I thought DeSantis was good. I thought. Um, uh, Pence was bad. I thought Scott was bad. I thought Haley was bad. Um, uh, Burgum, again, like Burgum's Burgum. Burgamentum is Burgamentum. Burgamania is Burgamania. And <laughs> D Doug Burgum is going to sit there and, you know, look, he, does he have a good record in North Dakota? Yeah, his record actually is decent in North Dakota. The state's done pretty well. Not all his doing, but it's done pretty well. My hair's very floppy, I'm noticing. My hair's floppy, dear. I love it. She likes the floppy hair. Um, but uh, but honestly, like, you know, 
look, uh, North Dakota is a little bit of a different place. It's gonna have, it's got obviously really great uh, en uh, energy, um, uh, an energy situation that, that makes their economic situation uh, maybe easier than it is in, in other countries. It's a, a company, it, states, God, it's, it's been a long day. If you watch the broadcast today, you know I'm still stumbling. I'm doing much better than I was by back then though. Um, uh, back then in the, in the bad days. But again, like Bergam, I don't think has any chance. Um, and I don't even think he's honestly going to make the next debate. Um, so there you go. Um, Hayden writes in, he says, oh, this is, this is, Hayden's spending the cash here. Another 20 bucks from Hayden. Whoa. Jeez. I'm going to retire on Hayden cash. Hayden says, I only dislike Crispy Grief, which I believe is Chris Christie. Uh, and Haley is too much into war. Pence has already shown his color, so he's dislikable too. Vivek is at least open to conversation and open and we're going to use Trump is the way TBH. There you go from uh, from Hayden. Thanks, Hayden. Man. Appreciate it. Um, but I, I, I will say, it, like Christie is interesting to me and I think I'm in the minority on this one. But I, I see Christie as a guy who has no real chance of winning here. So I don't look at him as a threat. I, I look at him as just like, an enter, like a piece of entertainment in this process. And he's way more entertaining than Pence. He's way more entertaining than Burgum. He's way more entertaining than Scott. Like, I think he brings something better he to this debate. Comedy. Yeah, like, he's kind I mean, like, he his line about, what was this Donald line? Donald Duck. The Donald Duck thing was, We're not going to call you Donald Trump. We're going to call you Donald Duck. It was cringeville. I mean, 100% cringy. And, and, I, and I'm, look, I think it's fair to call out Trump for not showing up to these things. I think that's a fair criticism of Trump. And, you know, look, you know, the whole point of everybody for the past five years and six years since Trump came out of the scene, the big argument for Trump was that he fights. But he's not here, and he's not participating in this process, and I think it's fair to knock him on that and call him out on it. Now, as I've said, if I were his advisor, I'd be like, ah, uh, you know, why bother showing up? You're going to win if you don't show up. I understand the theory here, and I don't think it's the worst theory, but like, I, I'd like to see him here mixing it up with these guys. I think it would be interesting. Um, but uh, So it was a fair thing to call him out. He called him out. DeSantis called him out. But the Donald Duck thing was so cringy, but like... Again, that's something we're going to talk about. Where I, I can't think of anything I'm going to talk about that Mike Pence said, uh, uh, you know, oh, other than the fact that he he was apparently sleeping with his his wife. Is he's that that's that he's so sleeping with a teacher. <laughs> I you could see that that point was fine. You could see um, <laughs> so you could weird. see Pence thinking about that line, yeah, getting halfway yeah. into it realizing his wife was going to criticize him and get mad at him for saying it, but then going with it anyway because he thought it was going to be funny. And then it bombing, really, it, it was just like, the Pence thing, haven't we seen enough of Pence? Like, I'd like to see, probably the next debate I'd like to see, because I'll answer the question about the island all day long. If you see, I, I think DeSantis, I'd take Ramaswamy still back on the stage. I'd take uh, Haley and Christie. And, and why, the reason why I bring up those four, and obviously Pence, or excuse me, uh, Trump would be great if he decided to show up. Um, but uh, let's see, what's this one? We got, um, but I'm gonna get to you, your, uh, Josh, your, your, um, your uh, comment here in just a second. Thank you for the super chat. Keep the super chats coming, we appreciate it. And if you don't wanna do a super chat, that's totally cool, throw a like in there. Click the like button. You got hundreds more in here that then have uh, pressed like. So if you get a second, please click the like button. We appreciate it. Um, on uh, where was I? I was talking about oh the, the, the that kind of final group, like you know Hayden is who's done a couple super chats has brought up a couple times the pro war side of the party and like I understand that that's the energy of the party is not there, but there's still a lot of people. I mean, you look at the polls. I mean, it's not. Uh, not 80-20 against, you know, for example, funding Ukraine. There's still a good chunk of that sort of foreign policy hawkish sort of view. It's not bad to have a Haley in there to represent that view. It, I don't think it's the winning view right now in the party, but uh, I think it is something that can be rep represented and we can all be adults and listen to these arguments and talk them out. You know, Christie brings up, uh, you know, something from the sort of Trump skeptical side um, of the argument, um, you know, again, I think there is some percentage of people who are going to sit there and, you know, and want that to be emphasized more. I think he at least brings something valuable to the conversation. But I, what I don't get is what Tim Scott brings to the conversation. Like, I don't get what, I mean, Burgum, uh, Burgum and Christie, is there that much separation there? Like, they're, they seem like very similar candidates um, in some ways. Uh, you know, I don't know that he's adding much. I don't think 
you're getting much out of Pence at all. I don't know what the point of it is, honestly, at this point. Um, you know, I, I mean, the fact that Mike Pence would criticize Ron DeSantis on spending when he, Mike Pence was in the White House for what, $7 trillion of, of d debt and deficit? I mean, like, look, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. All right, let me get to the super chat here. Um, we just topped 33 trillion in debt and counting. Um, and the debate didn't give me any hope um, that that was going to change. Can we officially use Monopoly money yet? Uh, actually, I think Monopoly money, you want to keep that. It's probably more valuable than the actual dollar at this point. Um, and, I, ah, man, let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to make these things work. Um, it is a real uh, issue uh, when it comes to the debt. Um, and no one cares about it. The treasury rates, 10-year uh, now, are over four percent i don't know go look at brian Riedel's tweets he, he'll explain it in actual detail uh but no one cares about it and did they i mean they barely spent any time on it they started on the economy there was very little talk about that they talked about the inflation situation a little bit which was cool um it is i went through the polls today on the uh, broadcast um after you know through after a few um shots of beer and uh wound up uh you know we talked about this a little bit it's still by far the most important thing to Republican voters is the economy and inflation and why everything costs so much. That is just the truth. That's just uh, where we are. And there was very little time spent on that. We spent time on freaking Nikki Haley's curtains. That was an important debate. Glad we got to that. I'm glad the moderators took action and told them yeah. to shut up. And, and can we get back to the moderators for just a second? Like, oh, I oh, like, uh, Dana. like Dana. Uh, I like Dana Perino. I thought she tried a couple times. Uh, Stuart, uh, he's good. You know, I don't, I had never seen the, the Univision lady before. Um, but look, that was a ca legitimately a catastrophic handling of a debate. And I don't know what they could have done, but the fact that they were not prepared and had some answer for if this were to happen is absolutely unbelievable. It was, I thought, terrible. They let them talk over each other constantly. And look, it's not just the moderator's fault. These are adults, okay? You're an adult. You're running for president of the United States. I get that your consultants have said you have to be aggressive. You have to just talk. You have to just put power through it. But it's disgraceful. Can we not be, can we not be adults and actually talk about these things? Someone pointed out, I don't remember who it was uh, on Twitter, that like these, de these debates are worthless and we should really just go with long-form podcasts. And like, honestly, we would get so much more out of this. I've listened to a couple of debates. I know uh, Barry Weiss has done them a couple of times on her podcast where she just has two people on and they go back and forth and talk for like an hour. You would get so much, that's not what this was, right? That's not a, that is like a conversation. This is a debate. You get so much more out of the conversation. I think everybody does. Uh, so let me see what else we have here. Bunch of super chats still coming in. Okay, Hayden, Hayden, you're, I'm you might, Hayden. Hayden is going to bankrupt himself. Uh, he's spending like he's the federal government. Ah. But he says Trump is so far ahead, he doesn't need to show up. No point in doing the throat punching until it's narrowed down to a couple of people. Trump will be part of the later debates. Uh, uh, Trump 2024. Um, look, I think that is uh, probably true. If, if if he feels threatened, he will participate in these debates. Look, the game theory plays out, Hayden. I think you're right on that. I just don't think... Um, I don't think uh, it's sensible, honestly, um, to uh, to go in there from a game theory standpoint. Like, you know, it's like there's an argument to be made that you just don't keep throwing the ball when you're, you know, you're up 30 points. I brought this example up on the broadcast earlier. And if I, I don't know if I walked through it correctly, you'll have to go back and watch. But, you know, Ted Williams was hitting 401. One or four oh two going into the last day of the season had the opportunity to be benched to sit out and just get the the first guy to hit four hundred in a long time and the only guy since, um, but decided to play and he went three of five and raised his average to something like four oh three or four oh four whatever it was. He decided to get in there and fight and like that's what I thought everyone loved about Donald Trump. That's what he does. He gets in there and mixes it up. He doesn't care. He's not afraid. He's not afraid of of losing a lead. But, you know, I, 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 he's not doing that. I can't blame him if I was on his campaign. I think if I, maybe Hayden's on his campaign. I would not want to be on his campaign. If I was on his campaign, I'd be like, I can tell you this. If Glenn Beck was running for president and I was working with Glenn and he was up by this many points, I would tell him, what are you nuts? Do not go to that debate. I would absolutely be doing it. But as a person who cares about 
this this process and doesn't just care about Trump winning, but instead cares about what happens to the country, I would like him to be there. You know, that's just, and I care what happens to the conservative movement and the Republican Party, much less, but the conservative movement. And uh, so I'd like him to be there. That's all. Um, my wife, Pam, and your wife uh, wife's commentary is the best of the evening. God bless America. Do you want to say hello real quick, please? Hi. Hi, everybody. We're Ron DeSantis 24. <laughs> and I'll even take Vivek as VP. Thank you. She apparently has a preference, which we're, <laughs> we're learning about DeSantis here. DeSantis right? Vivek. Yeah. Well, you know, look. Uh, <laughs> Oh, there we go. Um, so uh, thank you so much, Lee. Appreciate it. Uh, all right. Let's see what else we have here. We have got through all the super chats for the time being. I don't know how to get... You got to understand. I don't know how to do this thing at all. All right. Let's see. Uh, DJ LeMay, who made the other decision. Set out to win a batting title over Daniel Murphy. That's why I lost all respect for the guy. Huh? I like the baseball commentary coming back in. Although I don't want to think about the stupid Yankees right now. I've now beat my Blue Jays two games in a row. And are ruining their playoff chances. Um, I'm very angry about that. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, some, some. Uh, here's another one. Um, Trump's lawyers probably don't want him, want him nowhere near the debate stage. Look, I think that's a plausible yeah. thing too. Yeah. I mean, he did do a couple of elections or a couple of big interviews, and he was asked about these things. The Megyn Kelly one probably would be the one. On, he also went on MSNBC though. I mean, if you're going to go on MSNBC, I. I I can't imagine the lawyers were like, oh, yeah, you can go on MSNBC, but don't do the debate. That, uh, I don't know. Look, Trump makes all sorts of different decisions. That's how I see Donald Trump, right? He's a pretty unique guy. And, uh, and look, he makes his own decisions. There's no question about that. Um, uh, DeSantis lost tonight. He was invisible. I didn't see that as the case. Um, I thought he was good. I thought he was good. Um, he One thing about DeSantis, and this is weird. This is weird that it's playing out this way. And it's one of the things I brought up with Vivek which is like they treat Vivek like he's winning. Like Vivek is up by 12 points and they need to somehow figure out a way to knock off Vivek. And it's like, well, Vivek is, a, he's in the middle of the pack. That's where Vivek is. He's like third or fourth in the poll. Sometimes he's second. Very, very rarely is he anything higher than that. Um, I know I do have Jim Morrison hair. I apologize. It's cute. It's very floppy. Um, <laughs> but... Um, I'm you're, sorry. I'm you're, you have Vivek hair. Right. Vivek's, did you see the thing on Twitter where everyone was making Vivek's hair taller? Or the, some guy was doing it. It was very <laughs> funny. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've lost my thought now. What was I talking you're about? You were talking about, um, the polling and Vivek mm -hmm. and, oh, oh, Ron DeSantis. And yeah, like, so, but like no one seems to really go after DeSantis. There was very little interaction. There was that one Nikki Haley interaction, which was, I don't know, I, I uh, not much there. I mean, they went, again, like the Pence thing, at attacking him on spending, I thought was really bad. Um, but I will say not a huge, uh, not not a huge, I don't think it was a huge win for DeSantis. I just thought he was good. And, and I don't know, very, maybe. In these debates, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, please. But I feel like DeSantis is like very unbothered. He doesn't get in the drama. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to like, go, you know, nitpick, go back and forth. He mm -hmm. just stays and then he just, Gets in and out, knows where he's going, and th who cares? Like, Nikki go. Haley, I wanted to just shut up. Yeah, I didn't oh, get it like she's that. she's just so catty and snarky tonight. And that's like a side I, we've never seen of her. It's like a turnoff. Yeah, there's this thing. I'm like, I'm going to be the power woman, and I'm going to go, and I'm yeah. going to, like, oh, you know, she was like, bring it on, Tim. Like, yeah. all that stuff. Ugh. It's like, ugh. I, like... That was just as bad as it feels the fake. Duck it feels reference. forced, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the same thing with Christy. Like he gets in those moments, and it feels forced, and it feels like something he's just. He's like, I'm winning New Hampshire. Yeah, I've made. Yeah, I have made this decision. I'm going to do it. Hey, here's my daughter. You want to say hello to the people? Who? These Hi, are all the it's people. me. I'm Ainsley. What's your name? <laughs> oh, nice here we to go. meet you. Ainsley, who are you voting for for 2024? She do I say it? No, please don't okay, put don't. it. Don't. Okay, I won't say it then. Don't, I know yeah, don't put yourself. Show, show, <laughs> she knows. show her the PJs. This is the important part. Show yeah, the PJs. The best. That's who we're voting for right there. <laughs> <laughs> the birds, right, Ainsley? Yeah, the birds. All right, go okay, birds. No, we are horrible right. parents. It is I 10 o'clock. It's, so it's 10.30 and our kids are still up. Okay, we Ainsley, go. Michelle, a call, a Well, what's that? That means a cat eating a croissant. Okay, that's true. <laughs> Ainsley's, learning Very, Ainsley's leaning French. The other yes, okay, I give am. me the next. I don't even know what these people are saying. It might not be appropriate for your eyeballs. Bye -bye. Yeah, Ainsley's never been on a live with you, and so night -night. I'm night. surprised Ainsley didn't bring it to the Ainsley show. She says night-night. I'll be in a minute to say goodnight. Oh. 
let's see. All right. Um, Hayden. <laughs> I, I okay, like Hayden. Hayden is apparently Hayden, more wealthy than Donald Trump. We're learning that about him. Um, but Hayden seems great. I, I just work in the oil fields following Glenn since 2001. Uh, um, I was in fifth grade. Wow. And fighting the culture war. Big fan of Eric July and the Ripperverse. Love him. Uh, but more involved in politics than most in that area. Still, you're a legend to me. Stat nerds unite. Well, we love you, Hayden. Thank you, man, for uh, this. And you awesome. don't have to keep giving us money, but we, of course, do appreciate it. Um, uh, and, uh, and like, I think it's an interesting conversation. Like, I, I feel like, honestly, I was thinking about this about halfway through debate that, you know, like, if you look at this this uh, slate of candidates, it's not crazy to just say, look, it's not a bad field. Like, I don't know that it's the greatest field of all time, but it's not a bad field. They, uh, you have some, can kind of have candidates that represent each slice of the conservative movement. That's, you know, pretty good. It's not bad. And, uh, and while I, 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 I'm not like hugely inspired that that there's some magical thing going on here it, it could be a lot worse uh, you know like you could have the democratic field you know what if you had a field that like you're like excited about gavin newsom can you imagine living in a world like that that would be terrible by the way click like if you haven't yet i, I would appreciate it if you did um it's uh it'll help us get uh, these things spread around more and more importantly than even the like follow the channel uh we do appreciate it when you do that um let me see we've got some other uh, honestly, uh, Naruto 0076, honestly, Nikki Haley went full Karen tonight. <laughs> she did. That's, that's, that's kind a of a good point. one. That's a good point. Yes. I can't, like, I don't know. I so misjudged her last performance that maybe I'm going to be wrong on this, but man, that was cringeworthy to me. Um, Wayne says we need to narrow down the field. These debates are mostly useless. The tonight's was, I thought, mostly useless. I didn't feel that way about the last one, but this one I really did feel that way about. All right, we'll do a couple more minutes here, try to get, uh, some of your comments in. Um, I don't think Fox had a debate plan without Trump's involvement. Seems like Fox is just running a debate because it's the norm. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Like, I wonder if Trump would agree to a debate with like maybe the top, I don't know, Haley and DeSantis. I'm just, you know, or maybe, you know, I don't know, uh, Haley, DeSantis, and Vivek. Something where it was a smaller field where he got more time. I mean, again, I don't think he would, but it's possible. It would be, it would make more sense, I guess. Um, uh, so... Uh, that would be good. Um, thanks for uh, all the likes. I'm going to do a few more minutes here, and maybe I'll take a couple bit more. Um, uh, let's see. Bergam Bergamentum lost his momentum? How ah. dare you? Uh. I just want Bergamentum to, to stay in because I really like saying his name. I like saying Bergamania, and I like saying, saying Bergamentum. Uh, again, his his record isn't bad in, in, in North Dakota, but I'm surprised he got on the stage. We made, if you saw the, I felt bad. We made a debate graphic with six of them because we thought, um, we thought potentially, uh, he, it was just going to be the six, and then he got in, so he wasn't. He didn't even make our debate graphic, so that's, that's sort of sad. But it's not as sad as Asa Hutchinson who didn't even make the debate. How do they, How do we know who's going to make the debate for the next time? I, I don't. I haven't looked at. I think it's five percent in the polls. In th I don't know. I'll have to look at it. I think it's five percent. This threshold for this one was three percent. None of them are going to have the problems with the donors. There's a donor threshold as well. All of them will hit that because they can always buy people if they want to. Um, the question is going to be around polling, and it's going to be difficult. I mean, like you know, I think the thing with Haley, which is what, which is what helped her last time, is there is a slew. There's a set. We went over these polls today in early states at least, it's about 20% of people say they will vote for Trump and will not even consider anyone else. About 30% of people say they will never vote for Trump. And everyone else in the middle is saying, I will maybe vote for Trump or consider other candidates, um, which leaves you at a point, if that polling is accurate, and there are lots, lots of asterisks, of course, around that, but if that polling is accurate, all these other candidates have a chance. And I think that 30% that that's saying, I will not vote for Trump no matter what, was first looking at DeSantis, and then they're like, okay, well, I don't maybe not, maybe I like Christie in New Hampshire, and oh, Haley did I had a debate, and she said some things, so I'm gonna go with her, and that that's just really fluid right now. It's all moving around. The question is, if it locks down to a couple of candidates, will that be enough? Uh, that's okay. Zach just walked in the room too, but uh, um, uh, you know, it's possible. You know, will that be enough to actually, uh, you know, challenge Trump and push him to a place where? Maybe he has at least a sense of 
of a little bit of tension. Maybe at this point, all you want to do is make Trump feel it a little bit if you're one of these other candidates. I don't know. Should I do a debate? Do I need to answer to one of these candidates? Do I need to do something? Or can I just sit back with my name recognition and my record and no one's going to ever make me do anything? Um, that is going to be uh, the goal at this point, And there isn't much uh, to, uh, to really do for a lot of these candidates. Um, here's one more, uh, super chat here before we get out of here. Uh, Jason says, Stu and Lisa, the people are demanding a sequel to the Christmas twist. Oh would my. you, would you participate in such a thing? I have raised my fees, but yes. She's raised her no, fees. No, yes. So, yes. I'll, of course. Yeah. Who was I? The character was Holly, right? Yeah. You want to say hello to Zach? Bye. Zach's over there too. He's, not, this is, this is, you want to talk about, here's what I would say in the debate. What, what kind of parent lets their kids up to 1030 on a school night? Uh, that's a good question for a debate. And my candidate answer it. to that would be, I blame uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> uh, it's his fault. Hey, look, if Everything if, is Joe Biden's fault. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, I, I got to get out of here and put these kids to bed because uh, they're never going to go to sleep on their own. Obviously, they're, just, they're still up. I don't know. Ainsley just left here and she's probably doing, wait. She's doing something completely she's, different. Yeah, now. she's probably... <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's, they're, she's learning French. And what are you learning, Spanish? Yeah. They just decided they wanted to teach themselves languages. So, uh, the Duolingo. To keep up with the okay. illegal immigrants, Zach is learning <laughs> Spanish. Uh, all the, uh, yeah, that's true. And all the French illegal immigrants. Are yeah, all the in. French illegal immigrants. Uh, big problem. They're all coming in from t Canada. Go Blue Jays, <laughs> by the way. All right, uh, any more of these? I, mean, I just want to see if I can get the super chats, if I can at least get you guys. Uh... I, wait, I sent another 10 in stew. You got to read the supas. I'm working on it. This is another one from Hayden. I love Hayden. Hayden has paid for Zach's college. Hayden. Uh, in this particular, I don't know how to. The real VIP tonight. I don't know how to do it though. This is the problem. What? How are you oh. supposed to do? Oh, here we go. Vivek is the only one who has tricked me into believing he's a legitimate person. Who cares? Whew. Most of them are warmongers or plain establishment. That needs to end. Haley is the biggest warmonger. Well, I mean, I think a lot of them, especially when you talk about. Uh, Ukraine, you definitely will see that there is a lot going on. Uh, when it, look, I, the establishment does absolutely approve of this. So um, there, he's you know they're not alone. I think DeSantis uh, seems pretty skeptical of it. If you're looking for that as well, um, hey, uh, Vivek is very skeptical. Obviously, I, mean, I don't know what. I mean, Trump obviously was pretty active overseas uh, generally, but um, I, I think I would classify him ideologically as someone who's very hesitant when it comes to uh, the hockey, at least for a Republican, certainly. He's not particularly hockey. Um, but, uh, okay, before, I, I'm a little concerned for Hayden's finances, so I have to end this super chat because Hayden may just run out of money. I need to start doing lives and Hayden can come over and contribute to my Yes, throw, to throw my money feed. at my wife too, please. <laughs> so I can spend it on nesting tables. Um, before we leave, we're going to get some commentary from Zach on the Philadelphia Eagles. Zach? The Eagles are the best team in the league. Yes. What do you think about them being 3-0? Pretty good, and the, the Cowboys are absolutely yeah. terrible, losing to the Cardinals. Hmm. Um, <laughs> and how about, uh, yes, the Cowboys are absolutely like terrible. Gonna, I feel like they're going to do, I think they're going to demolish the Commanders 42 to nothing. No, yeah, or they're, they're going to win 42 to nothing, or it's going to be a 19 to, like, 19 to 17 game, and they're going to, like, lose or something. <laughs> well, it's like, see, he's just, he, you could tell he's a really good fan. The pessimism is coming through. Uh, Hayden, thank you so much. Great, uh, Hayden, after stream. Kind Appreciate of it. Yeah. And also, uh, by the way, Blue Jays look like they may make the playoffs, though they have lost two straight. Your commentary. Um, I don't know. I feel like they're just going to somehow all these teams are just going to win. I feel like they're going to squeak in by... You're going to squeak like, by? I think they're going to squeak in by, like, maybe one game. Okay, good. We're gonna, so, Jays are going to squeak in. Blue, uh, obviously, Eagles going to the Super Bowl again, you think? Uh, yeah, obviously. obviously. Oh, okay, oh, there we go. All right, oh. there we go. As you can tell... Um, I think that... Um, the, I think that the Vikings are going to, I think that the Vikings are going to do terrible. <laughs> See, look at that. I'm no, sorry no, for the worst people team, in Minnesota. The worst team, is get, the Bucks are were terrible against the Eagles. They're going to, I don't know how they were 2-0 and oh before this. I really don't know how the Bengals are not looking too good so far. <laughs> All right, we got a full sports show coming up later, but uh, we got to get Sega Nights and get these kids to bed. I appreciate you guys hanging out. And uh, before you go. Please uh, follow the channel. Click the follow button. What's a channel? Um, I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, <laughs> click the <laughs> click the. Click the Lisa page made me do it. Oh yeah, Lisa's on Instagram too. Lisa Page made me do it. She yeah. wants to remind me of that. Page? That's my wife. Who's Lisa Page? You can tell too. I, they, they, you know, obviously a uh, very, uh, very pretty wife. Oh yeah, right. Uh, very good looking kids. Yeah. You saw I mean... Ainsley before. You know that's true. And then you got me. 
I don't know about no, 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 no. Oh, that's rude. Hey, it's don't just, you? Don't, don't, don't. don't, 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 don't. Be nice to say you're sorry. Yeah, be on record saying you're sorry. He's sorry. He's only joking. Okay. I have brainwashed him very well when it comes to sports teams. Everything else, who knows? So thanks so much for hanging out. Click follow, click like on this, and click the bell. And I will see you guys tomorrow on the radio show. We'll have lots of discussion, and we'll be talking about this again on uh, Studios America as well. Thanks so much. Oh, wait. Uh, and Hayden says, I used to listen to Lisa on Pop Crush Nights. I love Hayden. <laughs> Hayden's the man. Oh, right? my gosh. Hayden, oh, you're the go. best. Right, mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> All right. Bye, Hayden. You All right. Bye, Bye Hayden. And, of course, all the thousands Bye, of Kirk Myers. Of there you go. All right. Oh, Thanks, my guys. Gosh. Bye. Bye. Bye, Hayden. We love you.